If you like what you've been seeing on this channel, please consider making a donation. It can be a one-time donation, or you can become part of the SCL VIP family by making a recurring monthly donation. The choice is yours, but any support you can provide will be greatly appreciated. Head over to supportscl.com to make your donation today. How many of the original 32 Skylanders have alliterative names? Welcome to another episode of Figure Focus, where I, SCL Matt, focus on the figures of one character in the Skylanders franchise. This week, we're talking about Gil Grunt. I've gotten a few requests to do Gil Grunt over the past month, so I'm hoping that I can do him justice. Gil Grunt is one of the original Skylanders. Not just one of the original 32 but one of the original three characters that came in the basic starter pack. So right off the bat, most people got their hands on Series 1 Gilgrunt. This was followed by Series 2 Gilgrunt in Skylanders Giants. As you may know, Gilgrunt became a popular character, so in Year 3, we got a third figure. Anchors Away Gilgrunt was the Series 3 figure that released with Skylanders Swap Force. Now if three standard figures in three years wasn't enough for you, don't worry. They're not done with Gil yet. Gilgrunt has the distinct honor of being the only character in the entire franchise to have a Series 4 figure. That's right, in Skylanders Trap Team, we got Tidal Wave Gilgrunt. This put Gil in the record books. Four standard figures in four years. But wait, there's more. Gilgrunt appeared once again in Skylanders Superchargers as Deep Dive Gilgrunt. Well, you might be tempted to call this a Series 5 figure, I wouldn't. All the characters in Skylanders Superchargers were considered new characters even if we had seen them before. So calling this figure a Series 5 figure would be very misleading, especially when it comes to the question of compatibility. Regardless, Gil Grunt has a record 5 standard figures produced. Not even Stealth Elf or Eruptor have that many. With so many basic figures to choose from, you would imagine that Gil Grunt would play a big role in the variant game as well. He certainly has a few, but maybe not as many as you think. It was a no-brainer that Gil Grunt would become one of Eon's elite. I think it's crazy that Sunburn didn't get an elite figure, but I think it would have been even crazier if Gil Grunt didn't get one. He basically became the face of the franchise. Gil Grunt did have a sidekick, aptly named Gil Runt. These sidekicks were originally part of a free delay promotion where you simply sent in the order form with the handling fee and four to six weeks later you'd have a sidekick in your mailbox. Over the next couple of years though, the sidekicks were regularly used as promotional items in various locations. All of the sidekick figures eventually went on to become minis. So during Skylanders Trap Team, we got a playable Gil Runt figure. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. The green Gil Grunt was a variant of his Series 1 figure. While Spyro's adventure released in 2011, it is my understanding that this figure did not release until late 2012, well into the Giants release. My memory of this time is a little bit foggy because this is exactly the time that I was starting to get into Skylanders. At that time, I was struggling just to figure out what was going on with the standard figures. I wasn't ready to think about variants. So by the time I did get the variants sorted out, he wasn't so new anymore, and I made the assumption that he'd been around for a long time. In any case, this green variant was spotted in an article from the HD room in October of 2012. They were visiting the Toys for Bob studios and got to take a lot of pictures. Green Gil Grunt appeared in one picture and the caption mentioned that it was made for Microsoft, but no one knew what that meant at the time. We would find out a few months later. Green Gil Grunt had the potential to become an extremely rare figure. As I mentioned, the figure was made exclusively for Microsoft. They made a deal with Activision and bundled the Spyro's Adventure starter pack with their Xbox 360. But instead of the standard Gilgrunt in the starter pack, you would get the green variant. Someone at HQ must have decided that Gil looked good in green, because this continued into Giants where we got a metallic green variant of his Series 2 figure. However, this metallic green version came with more questions. It was first discovered in August of 2013 in an eBay listing. This was just weeks before the release of Swap Force, so new Giants variants were not on anybody's radar. The description of this auction claimed that Activision released these figures at a special event. They didn't give any more details. The box itself wasn't really helpful either. It was marked as a special edition. This was not a tag that had been used before on a box. 
Normally, I would expect to see something like Toy Fair 2013 or E3 2013, but this just gave us a very generic special edition. Over the next few months, we were able to confirm that it was a legitimate figure. We discovered that the few figures that showed up on eBay were from a GameStop convention, but overall, it was still very rare. It wasn't until April of 2014 that this figure showed up again, but this time, it was available to the masses and there was plenty to go around. Before long, the shelves at Toys R Us were flooded with this metallic green variant of Gil Grunt. The boxes were still marked as special edition, but it became a very easily attainable variant. Now there's one last figure I need to mention before we move on. This figure is once again the rarest of the rare. It's the same situation I talked about when I covered Trigger Happy. This goes back to the summer of 2011 when Activision sent out single pack figures to members of the media and asked them to bring the figure with them when they visited the Activision booth at E3. Well, they didn't just send out Trigger Happy in single packs. They also sent out Gil Grunt single packs. Once again, the bulk of these figures were opened up at the booth. In most cases, the packaging quickly found the garbage can. So now we're talking about used figures that look identical to the figures that were released a few months later in the starter pack. And to make matters worse, the single pack Gil Grunt figure won't work in the actual game. It only functioned on the demo game that they were showcasing at E3 that year. With that being said, let's dive into our weekly rarity check. Series 1 Gil Grunt, as I've mentioned many times, was a starter pack figure. It's one of the most common figures out there. His series 2, 3, and 4 figures never really proved to be much of a challenge either. Deep Dive Gil Grunt, along with the Reef Ripper, was readily available in the C Racing Action Pack. So it costs you more than a standard figure, but you got a few extra pieces as well. The Sidekick, even though it was only a promotional item, was well distributed and is relatively easy to find today. The Mini, released in the standard double pack, as well as the Buddy Pack with Tidal Wave Gil Grunt. With multiple options like that, it's not usually a rare figure. Both the green and metallic green variants were originally thought to be quite rare, but over time we discovered there was plenty of stock of both. Now both figures can be found for very reasonable prices. That just leaves us with the 2011 E3 single pack figure, which I'm not really sure is even worth discussing. I've never seen one for sale. In fact, this is the only picture I could find to somewhat prove that it actually exists. Before I let you go though, Let's check in with this week's trivia question. How many of the original 32 Skylanders have alliterative names? The correct answer is three. We have Gil Grunt, along with Stump Smash, and Chop Chop. That's all I have for this week. Now it's time to enjoy a credits dance party. <laughs> 